All right, y'all, listen, man, we back here with another video, and I'm going to be talking about one team and one team specifically, and that's Joel Embiid and James Harden and the 76ers, man. And I'm going to be talking about their game uh, today with the New York Knicks, and what a game that was, because I had to force myself to watch that whole entire shit, bro, because it was full of nothing but free throws. That shit's annoying as hell. Uh, they are very, very good at what they do. Trust me when I say that. But damn, as an NBA fan, it's so goddamn boring to watch these guys have 27 free throw attempts to have 10 free throw attempts. They literally combined for 37 free throw attempts, bro. Quick fucking maths, bro. I don't know how the hell they did it, but they do it and they got a win off of it. Joel Embiid had 37 points by doing this shit, bro. And to be honest, I applaud it. It does take some type of skill to, you know, do what they're doing on the court. It takes some type of skill to be able to draw free throws and, you know, have the defense gravitate towards you when you're driving into the lane. You know what I'm saying? It takes some type of skill to do that because um, the both these guys are able to, you know, um, make very heavily contested shots. Like James Harden's known for doing that shit. He's known for his step back. He's known for uh, being able to draw fouls. And Joel Embiid is basically the same way. And if you mesh that together, you're about to get the fucking, I saw on Twitter, somebody said the fucking bonus brothers. I thought that was funny. Um, but literally they have the ability to make it so damn far in the playoffs with this play. I know I was just saying in my James Harden video, how I um, am kind of concerned with this team. And I really was, but by no means what I ever said, this team wasn't going to be able to get wins or this team wasn't going to be able to, you know, figure it out. Um, I still think that they have a couple pieces that they can have, that they can like, um, that will make them better. I think that they need uh, more defensive minded players. Tobias Harris at the same time, making all this goddamn money and is, you know, making his first three at the end of the game when they're up by 15. I mean, come on, dude. I, I mean, they, they, he needs to do something. Let's talk about Tyrese Maxey for a bit because this man went from being a guy who is playing behind Ben Simmons and who isn't really getting that many minutes to, you know, being the third best player on a team that includes fucking names of Joel Embiid and James Harden, bro. He's been so good to the point where they're basically saying that he is, you know, part of a big three and he's the third best player. I think that that is amazing. It's really, really hard not to root for this guy. I did tweet out that it's like he's somebody that you literally cannot hate. And if you guys want to follow my Twitter and don't hate me, go follow my shit. You know what I'm saying? It's right here, right fucking here. Tyrese Maxey, James Harden, Joel Embiid, big three in Philly has not disappointed at all the only thing that i can say is like i do not want to watch this damn team in the playoffs i'm gonna be honest uh if they're gonna be playing like this and you know slowing games down and slowing playoff games down by you know um putting up 23 points just from the stripe i don't want to watch that you know what i'm saying i think every basketball fan does not want to watch that shit but if that's how they win in games and that's how they win in games and i applaud them for that um, I do like the pickup of Paul Millsap, too. He's been really, really good for them as well. Um, he literally didn't... He had, like, six points in this game. I mean, he didn't really, you know, do much. He didn't really show his ass as much as um, these other guys did. But he was, a, you know, a positive on the court. That's all I can say. He was a positive on the court today. And shouts out to him for that. I genuinely just think that this team needs reliable shooters because going into the playoffs, I have said this numerous times, going into the playoffs, you can't just rely on James Harden. You can't just rely on Joel Embiid because teams are going to be coming at you with a game plan they're gonna they have an agenda they have a formula to stop these two players from being good at what they do obviously they're not gonna be able to stop them the only thing that they're gonna be able to do is contain them but um defensive teams like the cavaliers or defensive teams like the boston celtics maybe not throwing my people or you know teams with experience like the bucks defensive teams like that are gonna you know be prepared to you know try to stop james harden or try to you know clamp up joel and beat in the playoffs because these are their two best players and to be honest if these guys do end up getting stopped i'm kind of afraid for this damn team because they don't have any you know shooters that can like bail them out i don't really want to say bail them out uh more like having like a more reliable shooter than um i'm kind of scared for them because i mean you have tobias harris going three for nine today he makes a lot of fucking money to play like this um uh, matisse Thybul is not a great offensive player at all uh yes you do have tyrese maxi i do understand that and tyrese maxi has been able to carry the load before but i you know don't see him being able to 
you know, take over games the way he's doing right now in the playoffs. Obviously, I think Tyrese Maxey will be, you know, a good playoff performer. I think that he has, you know, the mindset and the skill to do so. But I'm saying that um, the guys around him aren't going to be able to pick up because once this team goes cold shooting, that's where I'm kind of scared. I mean, yes, they can draw fouls, but that's where I'm kind of scared as well because um, you have Georges Niang. Um, I don't know if you can really rely on Danny Green in a playoff game four times out of seven. Uh, Paul Millsap, Shake Millen. I don't. I don't really know about that to be honest. If you ask me, I'm not trying to like shit on the Sixers. And yes, I do think the Sixers do have the potential to you know win the championship. I do think they have the potential to um to you know make a deep run in the playoffs. But do I think it's gonna be this year? Absolutely not. And I'm so glad that I said that because if I end up going back to this damn video and the Sixers are going to win the championship, I'm going to look like a fool. But I mean, who doesn't look like a fucking fool on this damn on this damn channel? Shit. I'm the only one on this channel. What am I talking about? I want to shift my attention to the New York Knicks. And they have been disappointing me, bro. Like, genuinely. It's been so hard to watch the New York Knicks this season. And no, it's not RJ Barrett. It's not RJ Barrett. That's all I can say, because he has been hooping his ass off. I mean, the man just had 46 the other night against the Miami Heat, and let's talk about that game for a second, because they choked that game. Bro, the New York Knicks are literally what the Boston Celtics were at the beginning of the season, bro. They can't close games all of a sudden now. I don't understand that, to be honest, because you have uh, RJ Baird, who's having you know a monstrous game, 46 points, his career high, and somehow, someway, you still end up losing. They cannot you know, close games out. And today just proves it. Today just proves it. Not to mention that they literally just blew a 28-point lead to the, you know, the depleted Nets right now. That, that That's besides the point. But today just basically proved it. Um, a game in Madison Square Garden, I think this is three games in a row in Madison Square Garden where they choke. Um, it's not looking pretty for this. It's not looking pretty for the Knicks right now. That's all I can say, man. Um, Thibs, who literally won Coach of the Year last year, uh, starts off, you know, pretty, pretty shitty, or they start off pretty good, now all of a sudden they're really, really shitty, they're about like 10 games under 500 at this point, and you know, it's not really looking good, I believe that you give the keys to the city to RJ Barrett, I think you need to get rid of Mitchell Robinson, because he is not disciplined whatsoever, this whole entire team is not disciplined whatsoever, but they need to do something, they need to do something, they need to, you know, trade Julius Randle, and you know try to build around rj barrett i'm basically saying it at this point i'm not the type of guy to sit here and be like trade this player fire this person but i think the knicks need to fucking do it bro if they want to win now because they have talent on the team they have evan fournier on their team who played amazing today and not to mean nine for 16 for the field 24 points six for 11 for three he did his thing bro i know Thibs just want to coach of the year but the thing is, is that his coaching is literally hurting his fucking team, bro. His team has no chemistry whatsoever. Because if one guy gets hot, he don't give a damn. He's going to play you for, he's going to play you 35 minutes. If you helping us win this game, you about to get some PT. And to be honest, that's what's kind of hurting their team chemistry, in my opinion. Because they don't have, you know, a set type of guys who are going to be on the court together. So they can build off of that. You know, you have one time... Um, Cam Reddish is getting DMPs, and now all of a sudden he's getting like, you know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. You know what I'm saying? And today he got 60 minutes and he showed his ass and played very, very good uh, for the time that he did play. And if you ask me, um, I think Cam Reddish is a guy who you can, you know, put in your rotation, especially if, you know, you see Alec Burks going two for six. I don't think you play Alec Burks for 33 fucking minutes. I think you give it to the guy who's shooting fucking three for six or Obi Toppin, who has been playing amazing as well. Um, I think that the um, the New York Knicks and the way that they've been playing, the, the shitty basketball that they've been playing, I think it's on Thibs. Sometimes, more often than not, the way that your team is playing is a reflection on how the team is getting coached, if you ask me. At the beginning of the season, for the Boston Celtics, we looked horrible. We looked horrible. We were lacking chemistry because we had a new GM, we had a new coach, and, you know, we had new guys around Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, and we were still trying to figure it out. And, you know, that goes on the coach. Our um, ability to, you know, blow leads the way that we did at the beginning of the season um, just goes to show that it was the coaching. It wasn't just, you know, the players. And I think that that's going to show with what's happening right now with uh, Tom Thibodeau, bro. Because you have guys who are off their bench, you know, giving you, giving it their all. And somehow, some way, they're still getting benched and it's stunting their growth.
That's all I can say. Obi Toppin, if he goes anywhere else and, you know, balls out, I wouldn't be surprised. If Cam Reddish, you know, gets traded in the offseason and he balls out somewhere else, I would not be surprised, bro. If these if these guys on this team end up leaving or getting traded or end up uh, walking in free agency and, you know, they end up balling out for their new team, I would not be surprised, man. I really would not be surprised because this team is full of talent, but somehow, some way, they just can't, you know, get shit going. I feel bad for Knicks fans. I feel bad for the Knicks as well. And I feel bad for Spike Lee because he goes to every single fucking home game just to see his team get dropped off. Um, I feel bad for RJ Barrett because he balls out every single night just for his team to be, you know, 10 games under 500. But I'm about to get out of here because I'm just rambling on. Um, I'm going to go and edit this video. I'm going to get it up as soon as possible. Um, there might be more videos coming. There might be more videos rolling around because you know what? I'm I'm about to get on the damn grind, bro. I'm about to get on the goddamn grind, man. I'm about to be uploading non-stop. You guys better be ready for that. But that's all I got for y'all today. I'm about to get out of here. Um, sorry if I was rambling on a little bit. Uh, you know, just got done watching the game. So, you know, I wanted to get it out for you guys. Uh, that's all I got, though. I'm out this bit.